Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gundam review and today I'm taking a look at this, the Robot Spirits Ver Anime Gundam GP00 Blossom. And you can tell from that GP00 name that this is actually a Stardust Memory suit. This isn't from the actual show itself, this is actually from Gundam 0083 Phantom Bullets. And this is a mobile suit that existed before the GP01 and the GP02. Anyway, as usual, if you do want one of these of your own, I got mine through. Bye! So, as usual, the link will be down there in the description. Now, let's check it out. When it comes to Gundam action figures like the Blossom right here, usually I tend to only really get these when there is no Gunpla equivalent out there or no decent Gunpla equivalent and as of right now there is no high grade, master grade or anything of the such of the Blossom which is an absolute shame because this is a ridiculously awesome looking suit. It's got the Stardust memory kind of vibe to it, but at the same time, it definitely looks like something that would have came first, like a prototype. It has a very early Gundam kind of look, and to me looks a lot like the Gundam GP04. The big shoulders, the overall look and the color scheme give me that vibe, but on top of it, we've got some cool canisters around back, weapons up on the shoulders, and overall the Blossom is one interesting looking mobile suit. On top of that, we do have a transformation as well, it's a parts formation inside of this box, and I'll mention that a little bit later on in the review, but for right now, let's check out those aesthetics. So when it does come to the overall look of the Robot Dimashi Gundam GP-00 Blossom Ver Anime, this does look incredible. The overall shape and silhouette is exactly what you want, and the Ver Anime that's written on that box means you're going to be getting some good articulation out of it. Now, I don't feel the articulation is as great as what I would have seen before on some of the earlier ones, but we will talk about that a little bit later on in the video. But as for the looks, this looks phenomenal. Usually I find the eyes on an action figure don't tend to pop that much, but it's got some nice shiny paint in there as well as all the other sensors that's in a nice kind of yellowy green and it just catches it perfect. This is one chonky looking Gundam and it looks really cool. Like I mentioned, the overall look is a kind of combination of an early Gundam design, something like the GP04, mixed a little bit with some of the design aspects we would have seen in the GP01 as well as the GP03 stamen. But I will mention at this point right here that this is it just lifted out of the box so there is a couple of parts to add on. I just wanted to give the overall look of what it looked like as a standard Gundam but let's slap the parts onto it. So the only part really out of box that needs to be attached to complete the Gundam is this segment right here which attaches well this is the butt flap and there's so much going on. One thing I love about this particular design is the amount of thrusters. I've got these ones down here, nice to see something completely fully accurate with the nice red segments inside. We've got a couple of other segments which I assume are just the top part of the thrusters coming through. That looks pretty awesome. So attaching on that giant and articulated butt flap is super simple. You just have a sliding mechanism that attaches it on just like so. Adding a mighty amount of bulk and a nice extra couple of thrusters with the bunch of thrusters we have already. That looks exceptionally, exceptionally nice. It can move up and down and from every angle it just adds the right amount of detail onto it. This is one beautiful looking Gundam. So I was just about to slap this down beside the art of what the Blossom should look like. I noticed the, well, the weapons should be up on the shoulders and these are some Metal Gear looking weapons. And those weapons are this giant cannon right here for up on one shoulder. Once again, we do have an articulated arm. Seems to have a locking mechanism. Yeah, that can lock in just like so. Folding mechanism, maybe? No, that is a handle that pops out from below. And that is articulated very nicely. But I'm going to leave it in the resting position for now. The other extremely Metal Gear looking weapon is a Ray Dome for up on the other shoulder. Once again, this is articulated, so this can move around when it's up there. So let's check it out attached. So first up attaching the radome, this just attached on super simply onto the left hand side here. We've got a little bit of a kind of clip attachment which clicks in extremely nicely. That is what it looks like from the back, there's it from the front, we got a nice decal on it, overall looking good. On the other side then we do have that massive rifle or cannon that just does the exact same thing, make sure it's locked in place and then it just clicks on in again securely and feels perfect. So far this is working out very nicely. So now getting it side by side with the art 
as usual, I can't actually see what's going on, on the screen right now, so it's going to be up to your own decision what this looks like right here. But from what I'm seeing, it seems kind of like the feet really aren't as chalky and over the top as that art right there. The art does seem extremely stylized. Sometimes when Bandai are actually making the figures themselves, they tend to kind of drop the stylized nature and bring them to a more uniform kind of look with the rest of the figure line or model kit line. It seems to be the case right here. And speaking of model kits, there it is side by side with a standard sized Oryx 782, which it should be around the same height as if it was 144th scale, and there it is side by side with the high grade Gundam Aerial. So it is in and around the size of a high grade Gundam kit, so if you wanted to blend in with said collection, it should fit in just fine because that's my plan. But yeah, jumping in nice and close to check out all the detail on this Bandai has done very, very well. Overall, we've got some nice metallic parts in the detailed segments for those various different sensors all over the unit. The decals are an extremely nice touch, like the 00AE up on the shoulder, the Anaheim Electronics up on the radome. It's not overkill, there's just a couple, but they really do make it look great. Now, I often complain about this sort of thing when it does come to these sort of figures. Bandai to Machinations never really does anything to kind of low light or highlight the various panel lines in it. I'm sure you could probably do that yourself if you really wanted to, but I feel it does make a lot of the detail blend in a little bit, which to I get, well, to get sight, well, to play devil's advocate right here, probably makes this more anime looking than if you actually did line that sort of thing in. So that's probably the point. It is for anime after all, it's meant to look like if it came, right out of an anime and honestly i feel like bandai definitely pulled that off let's check out what else comes inside of the box so now jumping into the accessories and here's everything inside the box i'm not going to lay it out because there's quite a few bits in here first off we do have some nice effect parts which is usually the case when it comes to these for anime figures one of the best aspects we've got the parts for attaching up onto the back around on the butt flap which we've seen already and we also have a cockpit section for this thing's transformation. We've got a grand total of eight spare hands, that's 10 in total. Now let's take a look at everything. So like I mentioned, we've got a grand total of 10 hands in here, but one of the coolest aspects about these particular ver anime figures is this little thing, a hand rack. So the coolest thing about this right here is that it means you're able to store all of the hands that you're not using on it when they're not in use so they don't go missing. It also is really handy as a little reference to check out what you have. So what we do have in here is a pair of relaxed widespread hands, fully flexed all the way out, an even more relaxed set of widespread hands where they're just kind of hanging loosely. And then we've got two sets of holding hands. These ones have trigger fingers. These ones are just your standard kind of beam saber holding hands. And what we've had attached on the entire time is these kind of fists, which also seem to have a little bit of a holding aspect to them too. I think these ones here that are at the bottom of the rack, these are for holding the beam sabers at a little bit more of an extended angle. Now let's check it out. However, before we're actually going to do that, I'm going to get this up in a stand. Once again, this is Good Smile Company's simple stand. These are brilliant. I say it over and over again. Three pack for about $10 or 10 euro or so, you cannot go wrong and they do the job perfectly. Anyway, when it does come to the actual beam sabers on the blossom right here, these are cool. These are up on the shoulders right here. These segments around the shoulders and the rear shoulders, these I thought were some kind of like machine guns or Vulcans or something like that. I jumped over to the wiki just to kind of look and it actually says it's unknown if these can serve as beam guns or not. They kind of look like they can and that is pretty cool. You just pull them out from in there, that is where the beam saber handle is, and this is what it looks like out. It's a tiny, tiny little beam saber, and that is some cool storage. So when it comes to getting the beam saber into the hand, it's super simple. It just slides on in like so, and this is one tiny little beam saber handle, but I guess, how big do they really need to be? Attaching and reattaching and detaching the hands is super simple. These aren't too tight or too loose at all, they're just right. They pop on to a ball joint like so, the ball joint is in the wrist, not in the hand. And when it comes to the beam saber effects in here, we have a choice of two. First up, we've got a, well, standard, and I use that term loosely, beam saber blade. I should just say it's a straight one. It's in a straight line, but man, is this vigorous as hell. I mean, this looks so, so nice with that flaring energy effect down the bottom. I don't know why Gunpla doesn't do this yet. Get rid of those old beams and start producing some new ones. 
This looks great in pretty much any pose, especially just standing there like the energy is just wub wobbing out of it. And then we've got the alternate choice if you want something a little bit more dynamic as if this wasn't dynamic enough. This is a curved beam saber. We get these inside of the vast majority of these ver anime figures and this looks so cool like a nice swinging beam attack. This looks amazing. Get this into a pose and it looks ridiculously over the top. We have two straight beams one curved beam, and of course you can have both beam sabers going at once if you want to. Now if you feel like your blossom should be going a damn sight faster because of all of that absolute major thrustage round back, well thankfully the Ver anime line has exactly what you need. Now one of the mainstays of this particular line right here is those little holes that are inside of all the thrusters, and I say all the thrusters, I mean all the thrusters down to the soles of the feet and every little micro thruster on it, except maybe those micro thrusters, but most of the important thrusters all have that little hole. Well, that is where these come in right here. These are some thruster effects and these tiny little pegs up top are what attach them in. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's a whole lot more thrusters here than two and two are, I guess, mainly just for whatever you feel are blasting off at the moment. But these come with pretty much every one of these ver anime figures, which means eventually you'll end up kind of stocking up a whole bunch of them as you collect the line. These look incredible and you can have a whole ton of these going at once. You can also buy a little weapon sets as well, which also include some more effect parts so you can have that nice thruster awesomeness going around back just like so. But yeah, as you can probably tell from that big cannon on the shoulder, this particular mobile suit probably only uses those beam sabers when it has to. Once again, when they are not in use, they are stored up on the shoulders. And seeing as that beam saber use in hand is gone, let's try out one of those nice relaxed ones to check out what they look like. Well, you might want to put on the right one. Anyway, that right there is what one of those relaxed hands looks like when it's attached. Now, as for this giant cannon up top, this does have enough articulation to detach from its locked position and then swing around over the shoulder just like so. This doesn't actually go over the shoulder. I can tell straight away from the fact that it's got a handle right there. So let's actually swing that down to where it's meant to go. So once you do actually manage to swing that around, that right there is what it looks like. It is all in the one color, but this is one absolutely giant cannon. And we do have nice articulation that allows it to get into the position that you want. Now, I just use the relaxed hand to hold onto it up there because there's no real need to actually use anything else. It has plenty of strength to hold itself up, at least for now, because we're about to try something pretty cool. So in here we do have this final beam effect and this isn't for using with the beam sabers. This is for actually sticking right in the end of that giant long rifle just like so as a firing effect part. Once again, this does have plenty of strength to hold it up while blasting it off just like so. That does look so, so good. So if you do want to post this on the shelf, blast it away, this will look exactly like you want it to. Wait, wait. I forgot a piece. Let's try that with the additional little kind of blasty explodey bit like so. Now that is what it's meant to look like. This is why this particular line, or at least an aspect of this particular line that completely trumps Gunpla. Gunpla really needs to get on the ver anime level when it does come to effect parts and effect parts usability across lines like high grade and master grade. So next up, moving on to the articulation. And one thing I'm going to mention about this, which is pretty cool, is you can kind of hyperextend all of the joints. For example, what's down here inside of the hips, it does look awkward up close. And inside of the ab crunch zone right here, and of course it does kind of pull it out like so. But you can get some over-the-top kind of angles out of it for some more over-the-top crazy kind of posing action in some regards, which is kind of par for the course for the Ver anime line. However, I do find there are some limited aspects, just like the ankles here that just won't move in at all. They move down nicely, the toes bend up nicely too, but you can't get much there and the legs don't really spread out that far either. So there is some limitations. Let's try out the usual pose. So throwing it into the usual pose and I am definitely disappointed. I thought I'd be able to pull off a little bit more. It's a Vera anime figure. It should have a whole lot of articulation, but the hips are super, super limited. They are ball in socket joints. The 
ankles don't give you really any in and out movement whatsoever so it means it can't get low in a lunge. There's not that much twist at the torso and the shoulders are super limited as well. So even though it has a lot in some places, it's really lacking in a lot of other places too. Now I told you guys that I would actually start doing all of the articulation in a figure or kit in these reviews, but I'm going to put that off for a little while because I'm trying to clear the shelves of the backlog right now. So I'm kind of busting through these videos a little bit faster. And this one right here is a transformation. So let's get right into that. So now moving into the transformation, I will mention that this is a parts formation and that means you basically have to take some parts off to put it all together in a different format. It doesn't actually seamlessly transform. Uh, we have to add this little section right here into the mix, which is a kind of cockpit part. And it is actually nice to notice and I didn't expect this, but it does have a full canopy with pilot figure inside of it. You can open up the canopy section like so and there is the pilot figure. It is detailless and colorless, but it's still a nice little touch. If you're feeling crazy, you could paint it. So first off, before I get into the full transformation, I will mention this isn't actually a transformation of the mobile suit itself, so that's something I actually thought it was. This is more like a core block system. So this is something that basically, well, it's kind of vague in the wiki. I'm not sure if it actually attaches into the actual core of the particular Blossom or not, or if it just brings the weapons to the Blossom a la the Ale Strike Gundam and the Sky Grasper. From what I'm seeing, it was meant to be an actual core unit for using in the Blossom, but it never actually made it to the developmental stage. So I guess this is just a concept fighter in the Stardust Universe universe, as in Universal Century. Anyway, as to how this is pulled off, first you need to take the backpack off the Blossom, then take these two beam saber holding segments from up on the shoulders. Next up the butt flap, that has to come off too. And when it does come to the weapons attached onto this backpack segment, we're going to be taking the backpack segment away from the weapons by detaching them just like so. Then we grab that little cockpit segment, which is the core booster too. And then you attach on the backpack followed by the butt flap segment. Everything holds on perfectly strong. Next up, you attach on the beam saber shoulder segments onto the sides. That giant long rifle attaches onto a little adapter segment underneath it. For attaching the ray dome, you do remove the little arm, replace it with this little adapter segment, and that then attaches onto the top of the core booster too, just like so. Finally then, all you have to do is pop out the wings. We've got two wings around back and two smaller wings up front that move out just like so. And that is pretty much what it is like once it is completed. Lastly then in here, we do have this little bit of a stand segment. This attaches together in two parts and just attaches into the bottom of the core booster too, just like so. And that is what it looks like. So having an included stand is pretty cool. Now we'll mention the entire robot is left over because like I mentioned, this isn't an actual transformation of the Blossom. It's answer to the core block system. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and as usual with figures, I don't actually give them any kind of ranking. This is an incredible figure, however, for the Ver anime line, I do feel like the articulation did let me down a little bit. There is a lot of nice gimmicks, and overall, it is a beautiful looking kit, so aesthetically, it is gorgeous. All the details on it are perfect, there's no real screw-ups or anything like that on it, it just looks so, so good. When it comes to the accessories, it's got pretty much everything you want in here. It's got the two beam sabers, a bunch of different beam effects, boosters, as well as the parts required for transforming this into the, well, not transforming this, for adding the parts onto the core booster too. When it does come to the articulation, that is where I feel it is let down a little bit. Of course, you're going to get some cool poses out of it, but the hips really do limit it. Even for aerial poses, it's not going to get any crazy ones. It's probably accurate to the actual unit itself. It is just a prototype, so it's not going to be flipping all over the place doing the splits in space, but it would have been nice to get a little more. There is some nice articulation in the ab section and other parts of it as well, which will get you some nice poses. So in the end, it is a cool figure, especially when the Blossom is such a cool design and there isn't really anything else available of it. So it's worth it just for that. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I got mine through Bayi. There will always be a link down there in the description if you do want one of your own, and I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, Orgy95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.